What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis, of course this is TWA Motorsports and today we are coming to you from an echoey garage because it's freezing cold outside. It's actually pretty cold in my garage too, but as you can see, we've done some car jockeying, Trans Am's off the lift, Corvette's outside, and the SS is here, ready to be disassembled. Now you guys have known I have been wanting to do this for a while. Had a couple offers of people wanting to buy it like it is, but to be quite honest with you, none of them ever panned out. So. That's what we are doing today. We are going to start the disassembly process. Now we're gonna go pretty deep in the fact that we're taking heads off cam out, um, the blower's coming off, the exhaust is coming off, and I think we're probably gonna start kind of in the rear and work our way forward. But the very first thing we need to do is um, get the battery unhooked. Now I will tell you guys that you're gonna see a lot of content on this uh, because I wanna get it done and out. Uh, that's kind of the goal here, and so that is what we are going to be doing. Now I'm gonna throw some other stuff in there you won't see this in every single video until it's finished, but you are gonna see a lot of this. So, um, well guys, sit back and enjoy the disassembly of a 710 horsepower SS. The very first place we have to start, guys, is we need to get the power turned off on this thing. The battery on these are in the trunk. Uh, I did notice when I lifted this up, I thought it was underneath here. I didn't even look over there, but this is a spare tire car, so I guess that's kind of rare in these. I don't really know, but 10 millimeters is all it takes to take loose the negative side of the battery and that's what we are going to do. And then we're gonna lift this thing up and uh, I think we're going to start on the exhaust. Uh, it seems to be the, it, like I said, if I'm gonna start from the back and go forward, uh, I think that's where we're gonna start. Now that we got this thing up in the air, let's talk about what it has. So it does have Cook's exhaust from front to back. So uh, it's got a Cook's cat back and uh, it's got a Cook's X pipe or intermediate pipe if you want to call it that it does have an x in the front and then cook's long tube headers now the goal guys here is i'm pretty sure i'm going to sell all the exhaust and try to or basically try to trade plus cash uh, for all the stock stuff but if that doesn't sell i'm going to put it back on and it'll just have headers uh, i'm not going to take a ton of time to do that but uh, we also as you can see have a hole in the gas tank the reason for that is um obviously to get extra fuel they put a auxiliary pump in so uh, not a huge deal we're just gonna have to take that loose now this thing does have quite a bit of gas in it so probably gonna make a mess when I do that hopefully not too big of a mess I've got a couple containers I'm gonna try to catch the gas in but I'm gonna go all the way up to the headers here so we're gonna get this whole intermediate pipe out and the cat back system out and uh, on the ground so I can get some pictures of it to list and uh, once we get that finished, then we'll probably move on to the gas tank and that auxiliary pump. You can see that it, like I said, you had to, they had to drill a hole in the tank here, but that all meets up into that pump on that side. So basically it pushes more fuel so it doesn't starve. So that's what we're going to address first. And uh, all right, well, wish me luck, guys. So now we got a majority of the back off. We need to go ahead and get oxygen sensors out. They are seven eighths. And uh, once we get those out, we can go ahead and get the header flanges disconnected and we'll have everything but the headers out of the way. Which will be good. It's a good start, guys. Got a long road ahead of us though. Now I'm gonna go grab, um, these have locking bolts on them, which kind of sucks to be honest with you. Uh, so I'm gonna knock those apart and uh, get these bolts out next. Since I've got that off, I think I'm gonna go ahead and remove the O2 sensors. On, they're on the top side of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and take those out and then we should be get done until we have to let it down to obviously get the headers out. Uh, I'll probably go on back to the fuel tank after I get these uh, oxygen, er, yeah, oxygen sensors out. 
So I just tried to loosen those and there's just not enough room here, guys. So I'm gonna have to let them come down a little bit before I can unhook them, but that's no big deal. We're gonna move on to the gas tank and uh, try to get this auxiliary pump. You can see it mounted here. We're gonna try to get all of that out of the way and then kind of thread the wiring up. But they ran it through the frame when they put it in. Uh, so we'll get that out of the way. So let's take a look at how this is routed. As you can see, there's a hole in the gas tank and I really don't wanna take it loose there because I got about a half a tank of gas. So. I want as much line as possible. I'm going to go ahead and clip all the zip ties and that runs up to this T fitting right here and that's where the fuel pushes in. But I'm going to go ahead and you can see I've done a quarter, there's a little quarter inch screw that holds these into place. I'm going to take all those out, clip all the zip ties. I'm going to take these two 13 millimeters that hold the actual pump there. And then this line right here will be my drain line. So I can get it nice and close to the ground so I can put it in a container at least. Now that we have this whole fuel pump assembly down, I can go ahead and take the wires loose, just eight millimeters. And then we get to do the fun part, guys, and that is unhooking this line, probably getting a bunch of fuel all over everything. So really not looking forward to that. And then the wiring will route out once we get it on the ground. This this, I wanted to do everything on the bottom first. And um, so that's what we're gonna do. I don't like moving my lift up and down any more than I have to. Although chances are, well, yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to when I take the headers off, obviously they come out from the bottom. So regardless of what we do here, we're gonna get fuel on the ground, but I've got two containers here, they hold they're only five gallon containers, but they actually hold about six. So I'm gonna keep them kind of side by side here. And we're going to attempt to get as much in there as possible, um, just unhooking the line that goes into the bottom of the tank. So it is the absolute bottom. This thing has about a half a tank. I know I probably should have ran it a little more dry, but you do what, I wanted to start this. So we're gonna see if we can make a mess. And we're gonna make a big mess, I'm sure of that. Already making a mess. No, nothing you can do about it, guys. I do wish that it would have unscrewed a little better. I didn't have as much of a mess. All right. Now we wait. Shouldn't be a whole lot on this side. Now I'm going to reek of gas. I won't make you guys watch all this, but um, obviously once we get this one full, we'll go to this one and then we'll be able to start disassembling the rest of these hoses. So while that's still draining, I'm going to go ahead, take these tens loose to get this out of the way so we can get access to this hookup. Um, I just don't have enough room to get my hands in there. so. We'll get this out of the way and uh, then we'll address this. And I, I forgot that this was a saddle style tank, kind of like a Corvette. So um, even though it has um, basically a hole in the tank back here, I only got about five gallons out. So it's still dripping. Um, I'm pretty sure that the pump that pumps from side to side won't work without the car battery hooked up. So should be good to go ahead and remove the rest of this stuff. Now that we have this unhooked and um, that T out of the out of out of room or out of the way anyway, we can go ahead and um, put that plate back in. And uh, all we have to do is take the one out of the tank, which should be relatively easy, at least so I'm hoping, guys. Boy, it doesn't fit that. Not the greatest fitment here.
but it's on there. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and take this out of the tank. Now guys, obviously, I'm gonna have to get a plug to plug this hole and uh, I'm gonna have to order it. I don't even know what size this is. So I'm just gonna have to look at this once I get it out, see, determine what size it is. But for the most part, that's completely it for the pump um, other than the wiring up front. But once we get this out of the way, then we'll be able to drop this thing down and uh, maybe look for the wiring for this pump, go ahead and get it un or disconnected. And um, like I said, we'll come back later and I'll show you what I'm gonna, ha what I'm gonna have to do to fill this hole. But uh, let's grab the wrench, get this thing out, and uh, then we'll get this thing on the ground. Now you can see we are under the hood and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and thread this wire out. You can see there's a zip tie here holding um, basically what went down to the pump and they just threaded it through all the frame. They did a pretty good job to be quite honest with you. So we're gonna have to cut several of these zip ties and then this guy feeds back in and all hooks up to like a coil pack back here. So we're gonna have to unhook all of that and uh, we should have the wiring free for the pump at least and it's completely out of the way and other than the hole in the tank we've got that part basically done so the other thing is I'm, you're going to see me clip a ton of zip ties up here because like the catch can is zip tied in several spots it's going to be coming off um, you can see the lines that go down to the um, uh, oh the intercooler are going to or the heat exchanger are going to be clipped as well and uh, then I might go ahead and take the belt off but then guys I really think I want to work on getting the headers off so the exhaust is completely off and we're just focusing on the motor itself So now I'm unhooking the positive and the grounds for uh, the intercooler pump down below. Looks like they're 12 millimeter. The intercooler pump down below and uh, obviously the pump, the auxiliary pump that we just took off. So that connector goes all the way across the back here and then hooks up right here. Like I said, um, it's actually on the map sensor because it is boost referenced. So I'm gonna go ahead and chop the 40 zip ties off here. But like I said, they, they did a really nice job. So, um, you know, not complaining. They just, you know, they dealt with, you, you really can't undo the loom and put them in the loom. I guess you could, but that'd take more time than what it's worth. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, cut those and then we'll be able to unplug this and it'll be completely out of the way. Uh, once we get that accomplished, like I said, I think I'm going to move on to the headers. So we'll probably take all of the plug wires off, take the plugs out. And then these do have stage eight locking fasteners. The good thing is, is they did not put the, um, the actual locks on them. So I really don't understand why you'd buy them and not put the locks on them, which is fine with me because to be quite honest with you, it's a pain to reach those to get the locks off. So no, I'm not complaining at all. I'm going to go ahead, get those out of the way, and then hopefully we can get the headers off. Well, we got that out of the way, so now we are going to take the headers off, guys. And uh, what seemed like a pretty easy process on other cars, I think it's going to be not. I don't think it's going to be too bad on this car. Um, got to take all the plug wires off. I'm starting with the easy side, if you noticed. It's crazy that these are stock plug wires. This guy yeah, spent a ton of money on this car and put stock plug wires on. Not that that's necessarily bad, but I don't know. It just seems like you'd upgrade plug wires if you're going to spend all this money on this car. So I got those off. I'm going to go ahead and go grab my spark plug wrench or socket and we'll get the spark plugs out of the way, followed by the headers.
now that we have all the plug wires off, all the plugs out, take a look at these plugs, guys. Woo-wee. We're using some oil, which I knew, you know, from uh, driving this thing, it was using some oil. Now, whether it's just, I'm pretty sure that it's valve, um, valve guides just because of the way it'll puff a little smoke when I start it, but um, it could be something else. Hopefully not a ring land, which we'll obviously see once we get the head off, but we're gonna move on now and uh, we gotta get all the header bolts out. Now it's kind of odd. These are, like I said, those stage eight locking bolts, but they didn't put the, the um, locks on them, which like I said, I love because they're a real pain to put the locks on, but I'm gonna go ahead, get these guys out and uh, then we'll go to the other side, get it out and hopefully be able to thread the headers out from the bottom side. Now we have the header completely off the head, and um, I think it's gonna sneak out out of the bottom, but we're gonna see. I'm gonna go ahead and loosen the other side, and um, at, you know, guys, I, I, I took the easy way out. I know I did the easy side first, the side with the most room, but now let's go over to this side. It is a little bit harder on this side because you've just got, you know, your all your HVAC controls and box over here. So it makes it a little bit harder, but I still think we should be able to get to it with no problem. On this side, however, it looks like we will have to take the dipstick tube out. Um, not really sure where it's mounted, but we'll have to look at that when we get there. But I'm gonna go ahead and get the plug wires off, the plugs out, and uh, we'll start on those header bolts. I now have the other header loose, and uh, you can see I got it hanging there. I'm hoping they don't fall out of the bottom. I don't think they will while I lift it up, but uh, there's a couple other things I wanna disconnect while I'm up here, and uh, just petty stuff that I I'm, I want a little, little more room down below, so I'm gonna go ahead and unload the belt, take the belt off, and um, once I do that, then I'm gonna go ahead, actually I'm gonna take the catch can out here too. I'm gonna take the catch can loose, and then there is a ground I noticed that goes to the pump. So once we get that done, thread that back in and tighten it up. Yeah, and I think it's a 15 millimeter here on the tensioner, or you can put something in here. Either way, I'll probably go grab my wrench and put it in here for now. I think while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and take this off too. I just want to be able to see a little bit more underneath. No? That's nice. Got a couple plugs to undo here. The mass airflow sensor, of course. Goes all my stuff. Everything's falling down, guys. The ring on the end of the air filter fell off. That's real nice. And then the clamp. Not a big deal. But I need to unhook this guy. Doesn't look like it's wanting to be unhooked, to be honest with you. Yeah, I'm gonna have to grab a pair of pliers. We'll get that out of the way. And then we'll lift this thing up and uh, see what damage we can do on the bottom again. So I've also, other than the belt and uh, that intake, I've got these two lines pulled off that go to the catch can so we can go ahead since it's unbolted and get it completely out of the way. And it's full, guys. I'm gonna have to dump that. So I did go ahead and disconnect this oxygen sensor and I think this header 
is ready to come out. And I'm kind of surprised you didn't have to take the starter out to get that out. But this side is out. And as you can see, these things are um, coated. So uh, kind of nice. But the other side, I think we're going to have an issue. I think we're going to have to take the oil cooler out. We'll see. But um, I'll turn it over here. I think we're going to have to take this oil cooler out. So I'm probably going to go ahead and drain the oil uh, just to get this out of the way. But uh, I just don't see any physical way to get this out without removing this at least. So I'm back up top and I ended up having to unhook the steering column. So I think there's a couple reasons for this, guys. This thing has um, six bolt heads on it and it just wouldn't sneak past those flanges. Chances are with stock heads, you could thread those right up in here, but just wasn't happening. So I took the, there's an 11 millimeter that holds that together down there. I uh, took that off and once I did that, you can see the header is going out nicely. So I'm going to go ahead and lift this thing back up and we will get the header out uh, from the bottom. So at this point, we should, ah, came right out. Surprised it didn't fall out while I was lifting it. So, now that we have that out of the way, I want to focus on um, kind of the front end of this thing. So, let's take a look here what we're going to be removing next. There is a ton of little, looks like 13 millimeters, and then a little, a bunch of um, Torx bits that hold this front plate into place. So I'm going to go ahead and knock those out, get them out of the way. And uh, once we do that, we should be able to see um, a majority of the front of the engine, which is what we need to get to next. And uh, well, we're just going to keep plugging away, guys. So these are all T20s that hold this together. And uh, everything else is a 13 millimeter. So I'm going to start with the 13s. We'll get those out of the way. And uh, then we'll get those 500 T20s out of the way. So almost all of them were T20s. The one that go up were T20s. The one that go into the fender liners were actually T15s. So I think we've got this thing loose. We're going to go ahead and try to get it out of place anyway. I'm not sure how easy that'll be, but we're going to try. Looks like it clips on the corners. Got some tumbleweeds down here. All right, now we have access to some other stuff. You can see we got an AFCO heat exchanger, uh, which is nice. But we should be able to see now some of the things that we're gonna have to take apart. I'm really hoping not to have to take the front bumper off this, but I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to in order to get the cam out. Now I know there's there's people that have taken the cam out without doing it, but because of like the heat exchanger and whatnot, I'm pretty sure we're going to have to take a lot of that loose. But we're going to see what we want to work on next. I may, like I said, start draining the radiator and um, maybe the coolant lines into the blower. We'll see. Since I'm down here, I want to go ahead and let this drain. So I'm going to go ahead and it's a six millimeter for right here, the drain on the bottom of the radiator. I'm going to go ahead and let that loose. And I might go ahead and take the, um, on the other side here where the pump's at for the heat exchanger, I might go ahead and take the pump loose and see if we can drain a majority of that coolant while I've got this over here. Chances are we are going to make a huge mess, but I won't show you guys this process. Like I said, I'm just going to loosen that, let it drain, and uh, I'll show you a mess if I make a mess though. So I jumped ahead just a little bit. Obviously, I've got that draining and uh, it's still doing that, but... Uh, I was able to get the motor or the pump loose. It was just a 10 millimeter bolt up there on the frame. And uh, normally guys, this isn't gonna be something that you take apart, but I just wanna show you guys the process. And anyway, 
Um, maybe the guy who buys this blower setup will want to use this to put it back together. Anyway, like I said, it was on the frame up there. I was able to get it loose. I also went ahead and unplugged it. So I've got everything ran down over here, which is good because that's where I'm wanting to drain it. So once this quits draining, which will probably be another hour, uh, I'm going to go ahead and loosen the pump up and get this all drained out. Hopefully we can get all of the fluid out of the heat exchanger. So at this point, guys, we are, uh, I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to take the front bumper off. And um, to be quite honest with you, I'm tired. I know it seems like a short video, but um, I think that's going to be it for today. We'll call this stage one. So in the next video on this thing, we're going to get the blower off, uh, maybe get the heads off, all the front drive assembly, and uh, maybe we can leave the bumper until the very last because uh, we're going to have to have the bumper off. We're definitely going to have to have the radiator out and the fans out in order to get the actual cam slid out far enough, even if we didn't take the front bumper off. But because of the heat exchanger, I'm going to have to take the front bumper off. I'm almost positive, but that's not a huge deal. Um, I'm just going to have to jack it up on my lift. I don't have a lift for the center of my jack, so I'm going to have to um, basically get my jack under there somehow lift the front up get the wheels and tires off because there's some access points that i'm gonna have to get to in order to get the bumper off but guys uh hopefully you're enjoying this i know that it's not exciting to go back to stock but it does mean exciting things for other projects once we get this out of the way so it's all part of the process if you do like this video however guys smash that thumbs up button if you're not subscribed go hit the subscribe make sure you ring that bell icon that we are notified every single time we drop a new video and well stay tuned to see this thing come apart or what we work on next mm -hmm.